Hi, I'm Dr. John Alange. I'm a practicing oral and maxillofacial surgeon. I would like to give you some tips to achieve successful mandibular block anesthesia. My mantra in practice, as well as uh, my, my teaching responsibilities at a dental school, there is no substitute for profound local anesthesia. If you can't get someone profoundly numb, I consider that a complication of treatment. So there's nobody, myself included, that gets the inferior alveolar nerve block 100% of the time. As you see on the, on the slide, this is the landmark. This is where we want to deposit our uh, anesthetic. And, and despite our technique, many times patients do not get profoundly numb. Maybe here's why, and here's some tricks. Armamentarium. Typically in dental education, we are taught to use local anesthesia administration with a 27 gauge long needle. There are very few schools that teach the 25 gauge long and even others that will only allow us to use a 30 gauge long on pediatric patients. The whole thinking on that is the needle causes more pain. Stanley Malamud has professed for years that patients cannot perceive the difference between a 30 gauge, 27 gauge, 25 gauge long. The funny cartoon uh, uh, from Larson is pull out Betty, pull out, you hit an artery. Well, it may be funny, but when you have an aspiration, it's not. And Malamud has also professed for years that the 25 gauge diameter is the only one that we can accurately aspirate with. So, that being said, back to the tip, start with a 25 gauge long needle for more accuracy and less deflection. Next to consider is buffering of local anesthetic. It's new to dentistry, but it's not new to medicine and anesthesia. The pH of local anesthetics without vasoconstrictors is approximately 6.5. The pH of local anesthetics with vasoconstrictors is between 3.5 and 3.9, very acidic. When we add sodium bicarbonate to the mix, it decreases the discomfort and markedly increases the onset of action. There are two companies that have come onto the market, both uh, initiated by uh, brilliant dentists. One uses the dent dental cartridge, and that's the onset system, and the other is the Anutra system, which has a proprietary syringe and uses a multi-dose vial. The possible downside is the increased cost per injection. However, the profound local anesthesia, there really should be no cost. So this is a busy slide that shows the red and the yellow, articane and lidocaine respectively. If you look at the access, it on average, non-buffered, takes 15 minutes and 45 seconds to achieve approximately 70% local anesthesia. When you buffer lidocaine in this instance, at two minutes and 15 seconds, you're already at 85%, and in a few minutes after that, you plateau at about 95%. That is a game changer. Now, in 1989, in the Journal of Anesthesia and Analgesia, Raymond explained the differential nerve block, stating that there's a clear relationship between the length of the nerve exposed to the local anesthetic and the resultant type of anesthesia that is produced. They further stated that if the length of the nerve is bathed by the anesthetic is sufficient, depolarization, depolarization will diminish over a distance until it becomes too weak to activate sodium channels. Well, what does this mean? What it means is, why not bathe the mandibular nerve in two locations? So you give the initial inferior alveolar nerve block with lidocaine, mepivacaine, articaine, your choice. And then you have these adjuncts. In Gal Gates' technique, which he published in 1973, it required the mandible to be maximally open. And in the original article, he used 3% mepivacaine, no vasoconstrictor, low, higher uh, pH. And in Australia, New Zealand, where he's from, that area, used a 2.2 ml cartridge, which is what is standard down under. In 1960, and then again in 1977, Bazarani and Akinosi taught the, and published the closed mouth technique with a high incidence of success.
I am proposing you consider a hybrid. This is a dry human skull using a 25 gauge long needle. And so anatomically, you see the medial pole of the condyle very close to the beveled end of the 25 gauge long. There's no bone that you contact. What you do is you're parallel and just above the mucogingival junction of the maxillary gingiva, you take the hub as far back to the third molar area, you aspirate, and then you slowly inject. And the next slide is the technique. It's a leap of faith. The only thing that I show that will help you facilitate this is as you inject it, as you insert the needle, you apply pressure of the shaft along the lateral maxillary wall, which you helps you deflect the 25 gauge needle closer to the medial pole of the condyle. I guarantee you'll have improved success and happier patients.